Magandang umaga po, maayong aga sa inyong tanan, and of course, good morning to everyone. My name is Ryan, and I am the Admin and Finance Manager of BPSA, and I will be your host for today's session po. This is our second installment of our Usapan series. Last March, we talked about the cacao and featured Mida Philippines resilience and inclusion through investment for sustainable agriculture or the RISA project. From that Usapan po, we learned about the Philippines' potentials in the cacao sector. At kung chocolate at cacao po ang usapan last week, ngayon naman isang malapit sa ating puso ang ating pag-uusapan. Alam ko na paborito lahat ng Pilipino ito, ano, maging uh, umaga, simula sa umaga, tanghaling tapat, hapon, maging malamig or mainit man ang panahon, bidang-bida sa araw-araw. It, well, tama po kayo, isa lang ang ating mga iniisip. Ito ay ang kape, you know. Kaya naman, in partnership with Nestle, we organized this uh, learning session Usapang Kape Regenerative Agriculture for, uh, for Sustainable and Resilient Coffee Industry to learn how regenerative agriculture can help our coffee farmers become more resilient. I am sure magiging mainit at masarap tulad ng kape ang usapan natin ngayong umaga. But before that po, before we start, we have some reminders for everyone. So una... Uh, this session is being recorded and pangalawa, para sa ating mga nato-zoom, mangyari po lamang na mag-rename po tayo using the format uh, your organization or your company plus yung ating pong pangalan. And also, please remain on mute while our speakers are presenting. Should you have any question for our speaker, please put them on the chat box below and we'll address them later. Okay? And... If you're experiencing any technical difficulties while on the Zoom, please chat again po sa ating chat, chat box. Any of the PPSA team members will assist po sa atin. Ano? And last but not the least, um, let's keep this uh, safe space po for everyone to share our thoughts. Okay? To formally start po this session and introduce our featured organization for this learning session, please welcome our country director of PPSA, Ms. Ami Melissa Chua. Miss Ami, good morning. Salamat, Ryan. Thank you so much. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Thank you so much for spending your Monday morning with us kasama ang inyong maiinit na kape. To all those who are new to us, the PPSA is a multi-stakeholder platform recognized by the World Economic Forum and the ASEAN Secretariat through Grow Asia and funded by entities such as the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, the Canadian government, the Korean government, among others, and a number of agribusinesses in the Philippines and abroad. Our vision is to be the enabler of multi-stakeholder partnerships for sustainable and inclusive food systems towards empowering smallholder farmers and fishers to be self-resilient and um, sustainable. We work to achieve this through pooling, facilitating, and leveraging the collective strength of our agri-value chain players, people like Yupo, to develop and implement market-driven solutions to agricultural and smallholder farmers' growth. What this means is we unite agri and non-agri businesses and various stakeholder groups, including the government, research and academe, diplomatic community, and former groups. At masal masaya po kami na, na represented po ang mga groups na ito po ngayon. Uh, so we can help smallholder farmers become productive market players. For our youth participants who are joining us today, we hope you can continue to engage with us so we can work together too. We need your vibe, energy, and creative ideas. So as mentioned by Ryan, this is the second installment of PPSA's Usapan series. We are happy to see our partners innovating and evolving, and we see it relevant to help share the good news. So every month, we will feature organizations and topics that could support you in more effectively participating in inclusive value chain <clears throat> projects, agri-development, and food systems transformation. Special shout out po to those who joined us the second time. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. So again, for today's session, we partnered with Nestle's Corporate Affairs team to organize a session on regenerative agriculture and coffee production. We are confident that we'll learn something new today and thanks in advance, Nestle team, at syempre kay Kuya Arnold na kasama natin ngayon. I hope we keep this morning's discussion light and friendly as possible to maintain PPSA's platform as a safe and a neutral platform. 
uh, one. I take this opportunity too to invite those who have programs to share and would like to be featured in our Usapan series. Just message us at secretariat at ppsa-ph.org so we can line you up for the next sessions. So for now, I will turn it over to Angel Bautista, Corporate Affairs Executive of Nestle Philippines and lead of PPSA's Coffee Working Group. Angel, the mic is now yours. Thank you, Ami. Magandang umaga po sa lahat. Maayang bunta. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you to the PPSA team for collaborating with Nestle Philippines in organizing this learning session on regenerative agriculture. So napakasaya po namin ngayong umaga para na nakikita po namin aming mga partners and fellow learners na kasama natin ngayon, uh, mga estudyante po, mga kabataan, na alam naman po natin lahat na sila ang kinabukasan at pag-asa ng agriculture sector ng ating bansa. And thank you for your interest in regenerative agriculture and for joining us in this conversation on how we can make yung ating Philippine coffee industry more sustainable and resilient. Sana po lahat tayo nakapagkape na uh, <laughs> para buhay na buhay tayo sa ating usapang kape ngayong umaga. Uh, so alam po natin na ang rason kung bakit po tayo nakakakain ng, ng pagkain ay, ating, ay ang ating mga farmers. Unfortunately, despite sila yung nag-grow ng ating mga kinakain, ang ating farmers at ang kanilang mga pamilya ay uh, poorest in the country and often uh, si sila ho mismo hindi nila masustain yung kanilang mga pangangailangan. But it's high time na i-appreciate po natin ang work ng ating farmers uh, na nagbibigay po ng kanilang blood, sweat, and tears to grow our food. We need to recognize kanilang important contribution sa agriculture and food security in the country. And para ma-achieve po natin ito, we need to look at the problems na kanilang na-encounter at ang na-encounter ng agri sector sa Pilipinas, one of which is climate change and environmental deterioration. When environmental disasters in the Philippines um, uh, hit, uh, yung farmers po natin experience a lot of losses. And it takes uh, one, bulan, at saka uh, taon or tuig to recover and rebuild their livelihoods. So environmental uh, deterioration hampers productivity and affects the quality of their produce, eventually leading to lower income and profits. Isa pong nakita natin classic example dyan ay sa Luzon nung pumutok po yung taal, um, taon ho ang binilang bago nakarecover yung kapihan ng ating mga farmers. And para po sa Nestle, ang, our farmers are very important because yung value chain po ng kape nagsisimula sa kanila. Hindi po tayo magkakaroon ng sustainable, resilient, and food secure agri-system if our farmers are not empowered. That is why it is important for us to ensure that together with our coffee farmers, we are part of the solution. In our effort to grow more food, our agri practices are no longer sustainable. So ito pong mga practices na to nakaka-harm po sa ating uh, lupa and ultimately sa ating planet, risking the future of generations to come. As the environment deteriorates, the livelihood of our coffee farmers are also affected. Their production suffers and quality of their life uh, remains poor. All this happen while they are also struggling with the limited access to capital and farm inputs and constraints in receiving support. Regenerative agriculture in the Philippines, medyo bago pa puto sa atin. Um, limited pa po ang knowledge ng ating farmers tungkol dito at ang ano yung beneficyo na pwede po nilang makuha para mapaganda ang kanilang productivity and eventually ang kanilang income at food security. So ang regenerative agriculture is a new approach with great potential to transform our food systems, practices that restore yung nutrients ng ating lupa, allowing our farmers to produce better quality crops and leave our environment in a better shape for future generations. So nung 2018 po, uh, inintroduce ng Nestle ang regenerative agriculture practices sa, um, sa coffee farmers na tinutulungan po namin through our agronomist field technicians and coffee ambassadors. And through this training and technical assistance, Nestle hopes to improve coffee farmers' productions while equipping them to withstand economic and environmental shocks. So tinatransfer po namin ang kaalaman sa kanila at ang mga skills on sustainable and climate smart practices so that coffee farmers can also contribute to preserving the planet. And today, maririnig niyo po ang kwento ng Nestle at ang aming coffee am ambassador about regenerative agriculture and how it impacts agri in the Philippines. So napakasaya po namin uh, na meron pong mga kabataan at university students here today because we believe that sila po talaga ang future ng agriculture. We hope that you will see value in joining the sector and making it sustainable and resilient. 
We hope that we can share our learnings today with our family, friends, and our farmers and encourage more people to join the regenerative agriculture movement. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the session. Thank you, Miss Ami. Thank you, Miss Angel. Alam kong tapos na ang Women's Month, pero power na power pa rin ang ating mga women's leader, lalo na sa larangan ng agrikultura. Di na po natin patatagalin pa, pakilabas na ang ating mga kape. So, let's cheers to that. Tulad nga lang sabi ni Miss Angel, ayan, usapang kape, so kailangan ni kape. Okay? Um, and of course, joining us today in the Green Coffee Farmer Connect uh, Manager for Zone Asia, Ushana and Africa of Nestle. He will share uh, with us Nestle program on regenerative agriculture. Please welcome Mr. Walter De Smith. Hello, Sir Walter. Um, good morning, Paul. Good morning to everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. This was an old picture before I started to regenerate. So um, thanks for that. So I will I will speak a little bit about uh, regenerative agriculture in in coffee, um, much more about the the concept as as such. Um, it's please next uh, slide. Regenerative uh, agriculture is an integrated uh, is part of a strategy uh, to help address climate change, but also to aim reduce greenhouse gas emissions, increase farmers' income, and create better social uh, conditions. It's embedded in our Nescafe Plan 2030. We have a goal uh, by 2025 to source 20% of our coffee through regenerative agriculture methods, and by 2030, about 50%. Within Nescafe plan, we will be supporting uh, agroforestry, land restoration, green borders, repair and buffers, access to finance or facilitating access to finance, human rights and child protection, income diversification, including intercropping, cover crops, farm renovation, and optimized fertilization, including organic fertilizers, and women and youth empowerment. The aim is then to create an ideal farm or farm landscape, community landscape. Next uh, slide, please. What do we consider as regenerative agriculture? The definition is a farming system uh, centered around universal agronomical principles that protect, and I think here what is important, also restore, it's not only protecting, but also restore uh, natural resources, primary soil, but also water and biodiversity. So it improves, it aims to improve soil health and soil fertility, at the same time capturing carbon in soils and plant biomass. Next slide, please. So the priorities, if you look at our uh, regenerative agriculture, at the center is the farmer. Without the farmer, uh, nothing uh, happens. So at the center is really the farmer and it has to bring benefits to the farmer and the communities. We are looking at diverse cropping systems and, and livestock integration, collective landscape actions, water security and quality, biodiversity and soil health. Next slide, please. So we have developed a regenerative agricultural framework for coffee with the, priori with the priority areas, soil, the diversity, water, and farmer livelihoods. We're looking at different criteria and impact areas, and we have also defined already uh, main KPIs. In the meantime, we also have developed a farm assessment tool, which will help us to also monitor over time adoption of these practices and also impact at farm level. Next slide, please. Also, still work in progress, but we hope to uh, launch it uh, later this year, which will be a public publication, which everybody can have access to us, would be a regenerative agriculture guidebook, practical guidebook, which will be for uh, technicians and uh, agronomists. Based on this one, um, local adaptation will have to be developed and training material so that we can transfer the, the, the knowledge uh, to, to farmers. Um, this will be have to be localized as the conditions or the situation in the Philippines are different from Vietnam, for example, or Brazil at the other hand. But it will be a good reference handbook. Um, next slide, please. We're focusing on 11 practices and also on the impact areas uh, when adopting these practices. These practices considering of agroforestry, intercropping, also rejuvenation, renovation, integrated wheat management, uh, integrated pest management, 
efficient water use, wastewater management, waste management, and so on. Next slide. Now I want to focus a little bit on agroforestry and intercropping. I think uh, as part of the regenerative uh, roadmap, this is a very important uh, practice as it somehow take all the boxes. It, uh, it provides more resilience to climate change, but also it provides more economic resilience at farm level and within the communities. It has an impact, a positive impact on the soil health, on biodiversity, uh, and on water retention, for example. Uh, so it's a very important uh, practice, um, which traditionally was happening and has got a little bit lost the last years, but is now coming back slowly. Next slide. So what is actually agroforestry? Very simple, is an agriculture with trees. It's an old land use concept that combines agriculture, pastoral and forestry elements in one area. About 60% of the world's coffee cultivation area is managed under a polyculture system and 40% is under food sun. The polyculture systems are principally managed by smallholder farmers and provide benefits in terms of livelihood, environment, climate. Normally, the food sun monocultures are providing higher coffee yields on average twice as much on the condition that this happens in a very intensive system with fertilizer and water irrigation. Uh, so on the on the long term, an agroforestry intercropping provides a more resilient system. Next slide, please. And, and we see already, for example, in some origins, the shift of cropping pattern. This is an example of Vietnam, where we see from a traditional monocropping practice, a single crop, uh, it shifted to an intercropping system, uh, farming system with multiple cropping, fruit trees, pepper, for example which also improve the farm economics. In a monocropping system, you have much more risks. Uh, you have uh, price risks, you have production risks, uh, but you also, also have more chance of uh, outbreak of diseases and pests. Um, and you need to provide much more, much more inputs. Also, if you look at the long, at the, um, the, how, how long a tree can um, had to be renovation, the renovation of the farm. Normally, after a period of 20 years, uh, the tree is exhausted, uh, has been under food stress for, for quite some time, sun, uh, drought, uh, that you have to renovate the trees. Meanwhile, in an agroforestry model, uh, trees can be uh, kept for a much longer period. I just been, I'm just back from India. Uh, where you have uh, tree stock in the field, which are 50 plus years old and still producing 1.5 up to 2 ton green coffee per hectare. Next slide, please. So what are the benefits of an agroforestry model? So an increased and diversified income, uh, carbon sequestration and low emission land use management, improves diversity of natural ecosystems, reduction of water use for irrigation, as we have an improved water retention capacity and soil moisture, wind breaks and shading, a reduction in chemical fertilizer application, as we will have an improved soil fertility and soil erosion control, uh, less need for uh, herbicides, for example, as we have weed suppression and a reduction uh, of uh, diseases and insects pests. We have a stabilized yields year on year and an improved green coffee quality, and we have a better cost benefit ratio in the long term. There's a, on the right side, we have an example from India uh, with a lot of native trees, shade trees, but also fruit trees, uh, coconut, betel nut, and so on. The drawback is that it's quite complex, especially in the beginning, uh, where you have to set it up. They need to have a much more, uh, you need to have more planning uh, to ensure there is less competition in the field. Uh, you probably also need more uh, skills as you, you manage different crops, not only coffee, for example, but you have, you have to have the skills also to manage the other crops. Uh, and you need to see now which crops can, can go together in one field that there is not too much competition. Uh, next slide, please. So these are some examples uh, in Southeast Asia, uh, where you have, for example, Thailand, um, you have uh, coffee uh, with uh, fruit trees um, intercropped, and you have also, for example, cover crops. Um, then you have examples of uh, uh, India, as mentioned here below, uh, with the dense shade cover. Um, in Thailand, again, with uh, coffee and uh, fruit trees, um, mangosteen, uh, durian, 
um, jackfruit. Um, next slide, please. And then we have some examples from Indonesia where uh, they are intercropping with beans, for example, beans, which are also nitrogen fixing um, crops. Um, it also provides a cover crop. Uh, we have intercropping with uh, pepper, but also with vanilla, with avocado, uh, with ginger, with chili. So quite um, quite diversified farm systems, uh, which I have mentioned uh, needs quite some planning at the beginning. But uh, at the end, when it's uh, set up, it provides much more uh, resilient farming systems economically, but also environmentally. Next slide, please. So Hebe, I thank you all for listening to me and uh, I wish you a good continuation of the presentations. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Walter, for that very informative uh, presentation. Uh, Pangising kumbaga, in English, wakey-wakey sa ating mga uh, estudyante na, nanuno, na kasama natin for today's session. So uh, shout out pala sa mga students na kasama natin uh, for today's session, sa isang classroom sila, Miss Angel, na kasama natin for today. So, magandang umaga sa inyong lahat dyan. Okay? Uh, from Sir Walter, we'll learn the more global perspective. Yeah. So, from Mr. Uh, Walter, we'll learn a more global pers perspective on regenerative agriculture. This time around, punta naman tayo sa Pilipinas. Paano nga ba ginagawa ang regenerative agriculture sa Pilipinas? How is regenerative agriculture being done in the Philippines? Uh, to discuss this, uh, please welcome the Regenerative Agriculture Ambassador, Agronomist, and Government in Industry Affairs Executive of Nestle Philippines, Mr. Donel Tiedra. Sir Donel, good morning. Good morning, everyone. The earth is a beautiful place with cute creatures to embrace, a globe with so much to see, a home for you and me. The human race has continued to prosper, with constant developments making us stronger. Electricity to power our cities, transport getting us there in a jiffy. With each advancement, what are the impacts? We must take into consideration all of the facts. The earth is going through some changes, not like the natural ones in the prehistoric ages. Climate change is real and taking effect impacts which we continue to neglect. Our planet is getting warmer, the greenhouse effect being the cause of. Trapping in heat from the sun, the result of actions by each and everyone. The poles of our planet with the greatest temperature rise, the Arctic experiencing some of the worst from these highs. NASA reports are showcasing the reality. 13% decline of sea ice every decade since 1980. 286 gigatons of ice melts away every year. That's a 6.6 kilometer big ice cube melting to make things clear. Climate change in the Arctic has a global effect, Asia being a location with the worst to expect. With the largest population and land area, there is no denying. This continent will experience things that can be quite horrifying. Water, crucial for humans to sustain life and important to all living things. Melting glaciers will increase sea levels. The flooding of low-lying villages is all that it will bring. Human-generated CO2 and energy from the sun is absorbed by bodies of water, changing its chemical construct, impacting the ecosystem underwater. This directly impacts those dependent on the water source. Fishing villages that use the water for drinking, food and income will all feel the force. Warming temperatures will disrupt global weather patterns leading to extreme forecasts. Intense storms, floods and monsoons will take place with longer and more frequent droughts. Extreme weather can severely damage homes and fertile farming land, forcing the relocation of families, plants and animals, which is unplanned. According to the National Geographic, by 2050, if things continued this way, Asia would lose more than 5% of crop growth and major loss of land. Oh, such dismay. Asia has progressively been a global hub for agriculture and manufacturing exports. Singapore is a key example with one of the busiest airports and shipping ports. Extreme impacts due to climate change have a domino effect on the economy, causing damages to different locations and disrupting supply chains globally. 
These listed only a few of the serious impacts climate change has upon the Asian region. Serious troubles caused to water, weather, agriculture and the economy it can weaken. You may think this is just a warning for the future, but if only that were true. The disasters due to climate change are constantly appearing all across the news. The distance is no matter and they may seem worlds apart. The impact of climate change in the Arctic and Asia follow a linked path. So ang agriculture po ay isa sa mga major contributors sa climate change. And approximately 24% of global greenhouse gas emissions ay pinoproduce ng agriculture sa Due to a range of factors, including the use of synthetic fertilizers, livestock and food production, and deforestation for agricultural land use. These emissions have significant impacts on the global climate, contributing to rising temperatures, changes in precipitation patterns, and increasing frequency and severity of extreme weather events. But before that, I would like to direct a question to our participants. What are some of the current impacts of climate change in the Philippine agriculture that you have observed? Uh, kindly write your answer in the chat box. So um, I know you are all aware of, yes, water rise, there is extreme heat, there is soil degradation. So thank you for participating. So uh, as many of us are aware that um, Philippines has been ex uh, experiencing um, stronger typhoons due to impact of climate change, and even the crops are being susceptible to diseases. So thank you for participating. On the next slide. And these are the challenges currently being faced by the Philippine coffee industry. According to the Philippine Statistics Authority, um, production of coffee has been declining from 25,000 metric tons in 2018 to 21,000 metric tons in 2019 and continued to decline further to, to 17,000 metric tons in 2020. This decline in coffee production has significant implications for the livelihoods of our coffee farmers and the wider coffee industry in the Philippines. One of the major concerns in the coffee industry are, is the inefficient land use, kasama na yung mga degraded soil from conventional farming practices at saka climate change. On the next slide. However, by adapting regenerative agriculture practices that enhance the sustainability and resilience of our coffee farming systems, we can help to address some of the underlying factors contributing to this decline in production. Through the Nescafe plan, we teach regenerative agriculture practices to help our farmers nurture the soil and make coffee growing communities more resilient. So we teach our farmers common regenerative agriculture practices, and these are composting, agroforestry, intercropping, cover crops, and mulching. In the next slide, so in 2018, the Nestle Philippines launched the Project Coffee Plus together with GIZ in Mindanao. And this is the banner component of the Nescafe plan. Um, the, main, the, the objectives of our project are to increase the yield of participating 1,500 farmers to one metric ton per hectare, thereby increasing their income and economic viability through training and good agriculture practices, which includes the introduction of four common regenerative agriculture practices. And these are the composting, intercropping, agroforestry, cover crops, and mulching. And we also um, transform farmers to entrepreneurs using farmer business school tool and to engage government and stakeholders who can fill gaps in the coffee value chain. On the next slide, uh, hindi ko na to masha, uh, i elaborate uh, pa kasi uh, in explain na to ni Walter kanina. And these are the common regenerative agriculture practices adopted in the Philippines. Um, composting, yeah, which uh, naturally recycles organic matter to, to nourish back the soil. We have intercropping, helps improve soil health and serve as additional income. We have agro agroforestry, uh, integrates trees with crops and help prevent soil erosion. And cover crops, it hugs the ground and helps protect soil from erosion. And the next slide. 
Our efforts with Project Coffee Plus are set to continue as we prepare to embark on the second phase. And Project Coffee Plus Phase 2 will prioritize two key areas. These are enhancing climate resilience and promoting regenerative agriculture practices. And on the next slide, I'm very happy to share with you that our proposal on balanced fertilization research in partnership with the University of Southern Mindanao was approved by the Bureau of Agriculture Research of the Department of Agriculture for funding. So the focus of this research will focus on identifying most effective combination of organic and inorganic fertilizers that's, that um, not only provides the best return of investment for farmers, but also promotes soil health. And on the next slide, to summarize everything that I have discussed, please watch uh, the Nestle um, uh, video on regenerative agriculture in the Nescafe plan Philippines. Madalas akong tanongin kung ano ang susi sa masaganang ani. Kako, malusog na lupa. Ang regenerative agriculture ay isang paraan ng pagsasaka na nais maibalik, protektahan, at lalong mapasigla ang lupa, tubig, at ang natural ecosystem dito. Every time a farmer harvest, kinukuha ng tanim ang mga important nutrients sa lupa. At pag hindi natin ito ibalik, makakaapekto ito sa susunod na harvest. Mayroon pa bang agriculture kung ang lupa mismo patay na? Nida mo hindi natutubo. Wala na. Maraming practices ang regenerative agriculture na tumutulong ma-improve ang soil health at biodiversity. But in Nestle, we teach four common practices of regenerative agriculture. There is composting, intercropping, agroforestry, and cover crops. Ako, nag ako sa composting. Ang ginagawa ko, yung lahat ng mga tuyong dahon, inisprihan ko na lang siya ng EM solution. Mas lalo siyang nakakatulong na ma-enhance yung paglaki ng mga ugat. Ito yung intercropping setup namin. Kaya ako nagtanim ng abaka. Kasi yung kape, once a year lang siya ang harvest season. Pero ang abaka, pwede ako mag-harvest anytime. Yung agroforestry, mas baon yung ugat niya sa lupa. Hindi lang suwil erosion ang kaya niyang pigilan. Mas kilanslide. Ang cover crops, Nagsisilbing protection at tumutulong sa pagtaba ng lupa dito. Yung dalawa, yung agroforestry at saka cover cropping, same goal lang sila. Yun nga lang, yung agroforestry, nasa taas sila, yung cover cropping, gumagapang sa lupa. Ang pinakasintro talaga is, ibalik yung fertility ng lupa. Yun ang pinakabisik na foundation niya. We at Nestle recognize that the best way to keep our promise of good food, good life, is to equip our farmers with the best knowledge in agriculture. Nakapagtayo kami ng bahay, nakabili ng additional parcel of farmland. Wala akong kahit isang pulgadang pagsisisi. May panahon pa para maiwasan natin mawala ng malusog na lupa na pwedeng pagtaniman ng mga anak natin at sa mga susunod pa nating mga henerasyon. Sana sa mga kapwa ko magsasaka, alagaan natin ang ating mga lupa para alagaan din tayo nito pabalik. So as agric agricultural extension workers, agriculturists, educators, and students, we have a critical role to play in raising awareness about the impacts of agriculture and climate change and advocating for the adoption of regenerative agriculture practices 
that can contribute to climate change mitigation and adaptation. Thank you for joining us today and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sir Donnell. Uh, pa, from your presentation, para akong ano, kinalabit uli on what's happening, really what's happening on our Mother Earth. No? Pero nakakatuwa din kasi uh, may mga company tulad ninyo na you're doing or you're on, on your part na parang stepping forward kung ano makakontribute to our uh, Mother Earth, especially sa larangan ng agrikultura, sa ating mga lupain, soil, and forestry, especially the composting, intercropping, agroforestry, and cover crop. So maraming maraming salamat Nestle for sharing that. So I hope ma-pick ma up natin to sa mga kabataan na at nakasama natin for today. Sana ma-pick up natin to yung mga ganitong good examples na ginagawa ni, ni Nestle. And of course, hindi kumpleto ang usapan kung wala ang ating coffee farmers. No? Kaya naman, we also invited one of the coffee farmers uh, practicing regenerative agriculture to share with us yung first-hand experience niya sa benefits and impacts of regenerative agriculture on farming and helping to improve his life, his quality of life. You know, uh, this time around, uh, let's listen to the experiences of the coffee farmer from Maramag, Bukidnon. He has been farming coffee for 15 years. Wow, ganun katagal. And his current productivity is more than one metric ton sa bawat hectarea. He also farming other crops and grow livestock. So now, please welcome Sir Arnold Aber. Sir Arnold, maayong buntag o maayong aga sa imong tanan? Sir Arnold, I think you are on mute po. Hello. Breakfast with us. Um, Sana all may breakfast. Sino yun? Nagutom ako doon. <laughs> Masalap ang breakfast. Ayan, naka-unmute na yata, right? Si Arnold. Arnold, Hi, if Arnold. you can paki-on din ang video. Hello. 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 Nasa bukid doon po kasi si Arnold at kasama yung kanyang misis po. So... Arnold? Hello. Please say hello if you can hear us. No. Kung... Marinig mo po ako? Yes, okay. Okay na lang hello siguro po. na wala mo ng video. Hello. Ayan, perfect. Hindi ka namin, no. Go ahead po. No. Si no, baka off na lang ang video kung hindi makaya ng ano, internet. Pero naririnig ka namin kanina ng malinaw. Yan, no, rinig ka namin, no. Hello. Hi. Garubot. Patay. Go ahead. No, narinig ka namin. Oh, oh, wala pong narinig. Yung narinig namin, parang... Ayaw, ayaw. Pa-off na lang ng video. No? Pa-off ng video, baka makatulong sa bandwidth mo. Basta importante maka-aod marinig ka lang namin. Yung ay marinig sa mga Ipo pindi na. Ay ano narinig ka namin. Okay. You can start na Sir Arnold. Go ahead sa sharing mo nod. Missis Ms. Ma'am Angel, okay lang ba? Yes, it's good. Uh, Malino. Uh, hello, ma magdang tangle. Uh, tapos si Abia uh, upper pagong silang ramad bido. Uh, 
yung impact po ng Reginag sa aking pagsasaka ng kape. Uh, since 2008, uh, nagkakape po ako. Pero yung moto lang po ko sa pagkakape ay gawin kong nagpain ko ba yung aking sakahan, yung aking lupa para hindi may pagkakape. Pero nung po yung uh, Nislipin siya na kayong mga teknisya at uh, furnish na yun ang uh, traditional na gina, ginagawa po sa farm na yun pala ay patungo po sa concept ng regenerative agriculture. Kaya po, yung mas na furnish na po yung teknolohiya na reginag Uh, tumaas po yung yield ko per hectare and then uh, bumaba po yung paggamit ko ng synthetic fertilizer and then from 2018 po hindi na gumagal ang herbicide at pesticide dahil po sa apply po po ng region nakikita po na mas bumaba uh, No, nawala ang audio. Yung bang yung nga yung makakain mami. Tapos yung bang ako po ng zero ako sa farm mo. Ah, uh, yung factor po na ito po sirabahan ko po nakita sa farm namin yung kagpa-practice ng reading mas nilipibo po yung pagkasaka namin kape yung mga pinapractice sa asa na yun basta kumita basta basta lang yung 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 nairod yung lupa I think uh, sir ano pero yung kasi ng raid sa tulong po ng mga agronomist at technician ini marap nabuti po ng so yung uh, para Okay, Miss Angel, Sir Sir Donnell, I think ah uh, hindi stable yung connection ni, ni Sir Arnold no. Ah, uh, pwede ko ba na lang kayong tanungin ah uh, Miss Angel ah uh, Sir Donnell on kung ano yung experience ni and ah uh, collaboration partnership uh, with Nestle ni Sir Abner with Nestle. Abner. Ay ay yes. Thank you Miss Angel. Yes, thank you, Ray. Sorry, um, so part po ng pagiging <laughs> live natin is also the technical challenge on uh, yes. the internet connectivity. Um, <laughs> as mentioned po um, to the audience, Arnold is in Maramag Bukid noon. And baka at this time po marami nang gumagamit sa kanilang area. Kaya kasi kanina when we had our um, rehearsal, it was his connection was good, even with video on. Um, so si Arnold po is um, our... As, as you saw, na siya po yung aming uh, regenerative agriculture coffee uh, farmer uh, na naka-feature din sa aming video. Um, kita po sa kanyang farm ang mga practices, apat na practices na uh, kinakampaign po ni Nestle to promote regenerative agriculture. And um, na-enumerate na po yun ni Donnell and as well ni, ni Wouter. And nakita po ni Arnold na napakalaki po ng tulong nung pag-adapt ng mga regenerative agriculture practice sa kanyang farm. Um, ito po lahat ng practices na to nakakatulong sa kanyang pag-improve ng kanyang um, overall farm um, productivity. Uh, hindi po namin sinasabi na directly in-attribute po namin kung ano po yung na-achieve na productivity ngayon ni Arnold sa reg-ag practices. But 
ang reg act practices po ay isang uh, malaking component po sa kanyang uh, na-achieve ngayon na productivity na more than one metric ton per hectare. So si Arnold po is a coffee ambassador ng Nescafe Plan, meaning yung kanyang farm po ay nakikitaan ng kanyang mga mini-mentor na farmers ng uh, best practices po in uh, coffee, the good agricultural practices for coffee. So meron po siyang mini-mentor na mga about 10 farmers in his area. And um, kailangan po itong mga, alam nyo naman po ang ating farmers ay naka- uh, wait and see mode po yan. So kailangan meron po silang nakikitang kongkretong halimbawa na kapag iyon yung mga ginawa nilang practice sa kanilang kapihan, iyon po yung magiging resulta. So yun po yung nakikita sa farm ni Arnold. And napakaganda po ng kwento ni Arnold dahil um, uh, dahil po sa kanyang pagkakape, apart from yung iba niyang alternative sources of income, uh, nakapag nakabili po siya ng parcela ng lupa na na-expand po niya yung kanyang uh, farm. And yung kanyang very recent na achievement sa tulong po ng Nestle at ng GIZ, nat napatayo na po niya yung kanyang dream na um, two-story na farmhouse. And so hindi pag weekend po, uh, kausap ko si Arnold over the weekend, dun po sila nagsistay kasi... Um, Mas tahimik daw po and yun talaga nung una kong binibisita si Arnold, sinasabi niya na ang dream nila magkaroon ng farmhouse pare kasi malayo yung kanilang bahay dun sa farm. So ngayon mas natututukan na po ni Arnold yung kanyang farm, mas naalagaan niya yung kapihan niya. And maganda po yung tandem ni Arnold and ni Ate Jeanette, yung kanyang asawa kasi si Ate Jeanette naman po is very entrepreneurial. Um, uh, so si Ate Janet po holds all the finances, decision making is both of them and si Arnold po yung expert sa kape. Uh, so proud po kami kay Arnold because he is already um, achieving yung more than one metric ton per hectare na goal ng Project Coffee Plus ng Nestle and GIZ. So Ray, I think um, yun yung ma-share ko about um, Arnold. It is unfortunate that uh, his uh, connection is not stable. Baka we can um, try. Baka it's better now. I don't know. Um, Don, do you want to add anything um, from your visits ka sa farm ni Arnold? Uh, actually, lahat ni uh, sinasabi ni Miss Angel and dapat i-share ni, Sir, ni, ni Kuya Arnold is nasa ano na po, video. So I'll yes. send the link here in the group chat kung ano yung uh, YouTube uh, link nung uh, regenerative agriculture video namin and dun yung po makikita kung yung mga practices and yung impact ng regenerative agriculture practices sa kanyang farm. Thank you, Arno. Uh, thank you, uh, Don. Back to you, Ray. Thank you, Miss Angel. Thank you, Sir Donnell, for uh, backup ni Sir Arnold Obe. <laughs> you know, ito ay isa sa mga kalaban natin talaga, mga unexpected na ano, like internet connection pag via Zoom or online. So, thank you, Sir Arnold. Um, nakakatuwa no, talaga pag nakikita, nakikita natin at nalalaman natin na yung makarinig kayo ng ganitong kwento. na isa sa mga farmers natin ang kumikita at ubaangat yung kanilang kalidad sa buhay. Um, actually, pangarap nating lahat to hindi lamang kay Sir Arnold, pero sa lahat ng magsasaka sa Pilipinas. No? Sal saludo kami sa iyo, Kuya Arnold. So, may I request everyone po, uh, hit the button below uh, yung thumbs up or, or heart uh, emoticon for Kuya, Ar Kuya Arnold. Ayan. Thank you. May, may, may mga nag-heart and uh, thumbs up button na. Button. Okay, thank you. Uh, at dahil dyan, uh, sa usapang ito, we will now move on to another exciting part of the session. Uh, please welcome PPSA Communications Officer, uh, Ms. Susie Badidad, to, fa to facilitate the question and answer portion of the session. So, Susie? Uh, maraming salamat po, Sir Ryan, at good morning ulit sa ating lahat. Maraming salamat sa ating presenters and sharers. Um, lalo na kay Sir Arnold, no, for trying kahit mahirap yung signal nila doon. So I'm sure na marami pong interest ang spark natin, especially sa ating mga students. Uh, meron tayo sa classroom nga. So thank you so much uh, for coming here today dahil kayo talaga ang future ng ating agriculture sector. So feel free po to leave your questions sa ating chat box at sasagutin po natin yan um, ngayong umaga. So wag na nating patagalin pa. Let's bring back our panel of speakers for our Q&A. So uh, hello again, uh, Sir Walter and Sir Donnell. And Sir Arnold, if you can join us, po, feel free to turn on your mic lang po for our questions. So Sir Donald and Sir Walter, good morning po. How are you finding today's session so far? 
Donnell, Sir Walter. Well, very interesting, yes. and uh, I see there are more than 100 participants, so great to see uh, the interest in uh, in the topic. Thank you, Paul. So, so I'm so glad that you're enjoying. Um, so, Sir Walter is not in the Philippines today, so thank you so much then for waking up early to join us. Um, and also, Sir Donald, for sharing our regenerative agriculture in the Philippines that we practice natin. So to start off our Q&A, uh, this question is for you, Sir Walter. I'm just really curious to know, um, when Nestle first started its regenerative agriculture journey, uh, what were the challenges that you encountered? I think the, the main challenge is, uh, is changing of the mindset. Um, regenerative agriculture uh, was a common practice uh, before the 70s. Uh, and then after the 70s, agriculture had to be specialized, intensified. Um, you, you, you had to focus on one crop or husbandry. Uh, it had to be very intense. Uh, and so the whole generation of current farming farmers uh, have this mindset of agriculture need to be uh, very intense uh, and uh, with a lot of inputs. And um, I think that is also what we have been learning uh, at university, uh, looking myself uh, graduating uh, after the 70s, uh, this is how uh, what we also uh, studied. Today, uh, going back to uh, this regenerative agricultural models, uh, production systems, it's, it's, a, it's a change of mindset uh, and uh, it will take time, which, will, which is also difficult as we only will see impact uh, after, of course, we have an adoption, so we need to make sure that the adoption increased, but also then the impact will only come after uh, after some years. Uh, I think that is very clear. If you want to improve soil health or uh, soil organic matter, this will not happen in one year. Uh, this will take time. Uh, so it's, it's very difficult for a farmer uh, to see, the, they need to believe in the system, uh, and then uh, impact will see after four or five years, uh, and not and not and not a short not a short term. I think that is really uh, difficult. Uh, you need to have the long term strategy in place uh, and believe in it. Uh, and then I'm sure uh, it will have a positive impact on on the farm, on the communities, and on the environment. Thank you so much, Sir Walter. I think that's a very good point because here in the Philippines, um, regenerative agriculture is still really new. So it requires an open mind, um, not only from our coffee farmers, but also for us then to spread um, awareness and knowledge about its benefits. So thank you so much for answering that. Um, we have a question here in the comment section, in the chat box, I mean. Um, so any of you can answer this. So composting is good, but is vermiculture also good for faster production of organic fertilizer? Maybe Sir Donald can start this time. Yes, actually, we are teaching our farmers about um, uh, vermicomposting. Actually, in our facilities in Bukid Non-Integrated Coffee Center, we also have um, a um, vermicomposting facility wherein uh, we use African night crawler para mag-decompose ng mga organic materials para mas mabilis po yung decomposition and it can be used by our farmers as fertilizer. Thank you so much, Donald. Um, we have another question. Um, it's specific uh, to Mr. Tiedra. So may I ask what are the other areas or provinces within the country aside from Bukidnon na focus or included sa project ni Nestle on regenerative agriculture and coffee? Uh, actually, um, Dalawang provinces yung uh, aming focus. Uh, first is in Bukidnon. And then uh, yung pinaka uh, highest producer ng robusta in the Philippines is uh, Sultan Kudarat. So uh, Sultan Kudarat po yung uh, other, uh, other province na meron kaming operations. So this time, uh, maybe Sir Walter again can answer, or both of you. Uh, maybe ask if coffee can also be intercrafted with cacao. Sir Walter, maybe you can start from a global perspective. Yes, it can if the right model is in place. So there need to be a right structure. Uh, otherwise, they will compete each other. And with the right structure, that will be different lines. Uh, you have maybe two, three lines of uh, cacao and two, three lines of, of coffee. Uh, or the, the distances need to be um, 
are good in place. If we, we plant coffee and cacao too close to each other, then they will compete each other, especially as cocoa is quite, um, grow quite widely uh, and needs some space. Professor Dono, do you have anything to add? Mm, yeah, I, uh, I agree with Walter. Kailangan din yung uh, proper distance, yung correct model uh, para doon sa cacao coffee uh, model. So there's a strategy involved na kailangan natin sundin. Sige po. So Ms. Ruth noticed that we have many participants from the government. So uh, what support do you think uh, we can ask from our government partners today in pursuit of regenerative agriculture in the light of rising input prices and climate change considerations? Actually, maganda po yung partnership namin with the government ngayon. Um, they're very supportive of our initiative. Actually, as what I've shared in, in my presentation, na, um, they have approved our proposal on balanced fertilization, strategy, um, balanced fertilization research, wherein uh, we want to identify what um, combination of organic and inorganic fertilizer that can give our farmers um, the best profit as well as um, um, securing soil health. So yun yung uh, very important role the government is to support these initiatives. And actually, um, uh, the province, the regional um, regional high-value crops development uh, program coordinators are working closely with us uh, for this uh, project. Thank you so much. So we are running out Sorry. of time, but... Okay, so I just want to, Roger. yeah, I just want to add what Donald mentioned. I think it's very important. Regenerative agriculture is not organic, so it's. I think it's really to find the optimal uh, fertilization scheme. It's optimizing it and finding the right balance between organic and synthetic, um, and not only focusing only on synthetic uh, or only on org organic fertilization, but finding the right balance uh, that has a, a positive impact on productivity, uh, but also a positive impact on soil health. And the soil health will be on the long term. And that's that's a little bit of a challenge because you need you don't see it uh, tomorrow. And you will need to see it over the years. Thank you, Paul. So um, since we're running out of time, maybe we ask if we can extend just for a little bit uh, to answer some of our questions here. So I hope that is okay. Um, so let's continue. So do farmers involved in regenerative agriculture initiatives of Nescafe only sell their produce to Nestle or are they open to sell to other buyers? This is a very specific question. Um, maybe uh, they can, the Nestle team can answer that um, in the or through direct message. So uh, let's proceed to the next question. So wonderful presentations and discussions. So for Sir Walter, this is specific. Uh, this question is for you. So you mentioned earlier that there was an increased labor in Im implementing Re Region Act. So could you give up a percent increase in labor requirements from typical perhaps a range? I, I will not be able to do that, uh, but especially at the beginning, uh, it requires more labor because the structures have to be set up. Uh, but over the long term, uh, this will not be needed anymore. Uh, for example, once the shade has been established, once you have the, 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 the production system in place, uh, it, you, it will require less labor because then it's running. Uh, you have shade, you have less wheat. There's the wheat management uh, will, will not be there anymore. If you have full sun grown, you have to wheat three, four times a year. Uh, but setting up the model, uh, the production system uh, will require in the beginning a little bit more work because you need to do more planting. So you have coffee, you have other uh, crops, uh, you need to manage the other crops that so they also grow well. You have different harvesting systems uh, uh, periods over the year. Uh, you have to do the pruning well uh, to make sure uh, that uh, there's enough sunlight when there is flowering, for example. Uh, but on the other hand, you can also manage better your labor. Um, you can you can use the labor, for example, over the whole year. Uh, you will have an income uh, stream over the whole year because harvesting of coffee will not be the same period as harvesting of fruits, for example. Uh, that will be a different period. So um, in the beginning, yes, labor will be more, but over a longer period, I believe it will be lower. Thank you so much, Sir Walter. I, uh, I hope that answers your question, uh, Sir Anton. So we can continue the Q&A session until 11.10, but if you have other things to do, especially our participants, uh, we will understand. But we have some more questions here. Um, Maybe both of you can answer this. So among those strategies discussed on Nescafe Plan 3030, what should coffee farmers and industry stakeholders should prioritize to adopt to climate change impacts 
on coffee production while also promoting sustainable agricultural practices? Uh, yeah, uh, for me, uh, this is the regenerative agriculture practices, so, uh, especially for our farmers. Because um, uh, in the Philippines, uh, are not, uh, our farmers are not even doing um, uh, the first step important talaga yung uh, pag soil analysis so they don't do soil analysis so better is really to you know um uh, to reduce the use of synthetic fertilizer especially now that um uh, meron talagang malaking, uh, malaking impact yung um synthetic uh, on soil health and uh, as what what as what water have mentioned that um kailangan namin talaga tong result ng balanced fertilization research to really identify what combination and don't tayo magsisimula for for um, to to bring back the soil health and also um biodiversity water yung ganun. so lahat naman yan is um um uh, uh, covered no regenerative agriculture Mr. Donald, um, this one again is for Sir Walter. So Google has defined sustainable agriculture and regenerative agriculture. So using the coffee lens, what is the difference between the two terms? Um, in terms of farm practices and climate change. It's a, it's a, it's a difficult question. Uh, I, I think what is important is that on regenerative agriculture, we are also focusing on, on restoring. It's not only on protecting, uh, but also restoring uh, the environment, the soil, uh, the water, um so i th i think that that is a very important uh, uh message also i want to add what uh, what uh, donna has mentioned it's very important that whatever we do has a positive impact on the farmer and the communities as you have seen uh, on my presentation the farmer is at the center of everything um so it need to be indeed and an have a positive impact on climate uh, and that is what we believe through regenerative agriculture addressing climate, uh, but at the other hand, uh, the, the farmer, the community is at the center of everything what we are doing and what we would like to promote. Thank you so much Paul, again. So before we close our Q&A session, do you have any message um, to our coffee farmers or the youth, the students that are present here today listening to you um, talk about regenerative agriculture? I think, uh, especially for the agriculture industry, that we should recognize the threat of climate change to the long-term sustainability of coffee agriculture. Uh, wag po natin haya ang darating yung oras na wala na tayong kapeng maiinom. All we are, um, all we are drinking is just synthetic coffee. And actually, may research na po sa ibang bansa na possible, possible na walang kape na in the future na crop. And ang ang iniinom lang natin na kape is the synthetic coffee. So, wag po natin hayaang nangyari yun. <laughs> Kailangan natin i-restore yung soil health para may maganda pa yung lupa na matatagdan ng coffee in the future. Walter, any last words for our student participants and our coffee farmers? No, I, what is important is the students will be the next generation. So uh, I think there, uh, if you already have the mindset of regenerative agriculture embedded in the next generation of agronomists, uh, I think that would be great. Uh, we have to convince uh, also the, the technicians, the agronomists uh, of the of the of the the concept, uh, and then to be sure that we also transfer this concept uh, to uh, to the, the persons who are adopting and and the communities. Uh, and uh, there will be a lot of research needed, additional research needed uh, on the concept. Uh, there's a lot of new learnings that we all have to, to bring. Um, and I think that is an important uh, part of, of this new generation that will come uh, uh, and work on the ground. Maraming salamat po ulit for sharing with us um, your experiences and your learnings and insights on regenerative agriculture. And I'm sure yung future generation of farmers natin, the youth today, I'm sure they've learned a lot um, about this new movement. So for the questions po that uh, we missed or we didn't answer, uh, we will note this and we will get back to you. So maraming salamat po ulit and I hope we learned a lot today. So over to you po, Sir Ryan. Thank you, Sorry, Susie. Ray. Sorry, ah, Ryan. Go, uh, go with Angel. Sorry, um, Susie, I was also able to address some of the questions in the chat. 
um, para naman ma-accommodate natin almost all of them. But just want to highlight that, um, yes, Nestle uh, offers training and technical assistance to the farmers, but they are open to sell to other buyers. But of course, syempre, ang, uh, what we prefer is for them to sell their um, green coffee beans to us because um, Nestle can uh, absorb all the production of coffee, Robusta coffee in the Philippines because um, we need uh, all the raw mats that we need for our Nescafe. Kulang na kulang po ang local production. And um, wish po namin aspiration is for us to be able to buy as much local as we can and um, not rely on imported anymore. So yun po ang ating um, long-term vision for the coffee industry in the Philippines. Thank you. Back Thank, to you Ray. Angel. Thank you, Ms. Angel. Um, before we close this session, po, no, uh, let's have a quick poll. So we want to get your feedback on this learning session. So um, okay, as, as, as you can see, po, uh, I think uh, the first question is, uh, were you satisfied with the learning session? So, pili lang po kayo. Very satisfied, satisfied, not satisfied. Sana naman walang sat not satisfied, no? <laughs> okay, and on, the <laughs> <laughs> on the second question po, what topic do you want to see in the future usapan series? Kasi nga po, marami pa tayong series na paparating. So, gusto po namin malaman mula sa inyo kung anong gusto ninyong pag-usapan sa, sa mga susunod na usapan series po. Okay. Yes, Ray, kasi di ba gagawin po natin ito yung sa usapang kape ng every quarter. So, yes, meron pa tayong tatlo pang sessions. Yes, ang paparating tayo. Yes, yan ang yes. sa ating mamaya. So, Tamangan. correct. So, meron tayong commodity or crop-based topics, uh, responsible investing in agriculture, climate smart agriculture, agri-innovation, so, and also kung ano pa po yung others. So, yung sa others po, you can type on the chat box para po ma-pick up ng team natin kung ano pa yung mga wala sa sa mga choices natin na topics. So, yun. At least uh, we have 52%, 54%. So, at least 70% to 75% sana ang sumagot. Nakatuwa may mga pumapasok pa no na Ray, meron mo, tayo in the audience actually um merong University of Tokyo and it's wow. also nice to be seeing all the participants from the Department of Agriculture Department of Trade and Industry we also have of course yung shout out ko University of Southern Mindanao um meron din po tayong university from the Visayas if i remember correctly and it's also very heartwarming to see um yung ating mga colleagues uh, from Nestle Correct. agronomists uh, also in the call nakakatuwa no hindi lang national ang, ang mga participants natin for today international session. international <laughs> so nakakatuwa so from students thank to... you so much everyone for uh, your interest yeah. in regenerative agriculture and um si Nestle po wants to own this um, regenerative agriculture topic and we want to be um, educating more the public on regenerative agriculture yun uh, so as you got is 71% i think this, this is enough miss angel no Pasado na ba yan sa'yo, Ray? Yes. <laughs> At ang pinakang-highest natin actually is the next session. Mas uh, interested sila sa climate smart agriculture. Next right. is agri-innovation. So take note. Take note. Noted po lahat ng inyong mga sagot. Yes. So so sana pag-usapan natin ito. At makita po namin kayo sa mga susunod na mga Uli. learning sessions natin. Uh, yes. Yeah, so usapan series. Okay. Thank you. Back to you. Back to me. Back to you. Miss uh, I, I think <laughs> Sa iyo yata, Ray. Okay, Jade. <laughs> Kinalimutan mo ako. Na... Nakalimu... Ako nga pala. Kinalimutan mo. <laughs> yes. Synthesis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, to share with us the synthesis po of the Usapang Kape, may we call on Miss Jade Herrera, our uh, Partnerships Engagement Manager. Sorry, and... Back to you, <laughs> Jade. You have the floor, Jade. Go ahead. Thank yeah. you. Na Nasobrahan po yata ng kape si kape. Kuya Rai. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, just to summarize what was discussed uh, earlier in the presentations and of course during the usapan portion, uh, 
as Donal highlighted kanina, so agriculture is one of the biggest contributors to climate change. Kaya kailangan na tayo sa agriculture sector. We need to do our part in ensuring that our agricultural and food production processes are climate smart and will help contribute dun sa tinatawag natin na sustainability and resilience ng environment. Uh, nasabi rin ni Donal kanina na meron na actually research na possible pala na, mag, na mawalan na ng ng coffee crop in the future pag hindi natin inalagaan yung soil. Kaya we also have to do our part in restoring para may maganda pa ring lupa na matatamnan ng kape in the future. Siyempre, pag walang kape, nako, ma mababawasan ng energy ni, ni Kuya Ryan. Hindi pwede ang synthetic coffee dyan. So, of course, uh, one of these climate practices ay ang tinatawag natin na regenerative agriculture. And Walter explained earlier that RA or regenerative agriculture is a farming system that is centered around yung universal agronomic uh, principles that protect and restore uh, natural resources, primarily the soil, water, and, bi and biodiversity. So it aims to improve yung tinatawag natin na soil health and soil fertility. Well, there are many RA practices uh, in, in the Philippines. Donald shared that Nestle is teaching coffee farmers in Bukidnon and Sultan Kudarat uh, for uh, common RA practices which, I, which are composting or yung pagre-recycle ng organic matter to nourish the soil. Kasama din dyan yung intercropping which improves yung soil health by planting other crops. And this, is, uh, this also serves as an additional source of income for the coffee farmers. And then yung agroforestry which integrates yung trees with crops to help prevent soil erosion and yung cover crops which hugs the ground and helps protect soil from erosion and landslides. So dun din sa video na pinakita kanina na mention na yung agroforestry and yung cover crops, yung difference niya is yung cover crops nasa ground. Pero yung agroforestry yung kasi trees nga so medyo mataas yung ano nila. And then yung mga challenges naman, uh, Walter explained uh, earlier that one of the biggest challenge is changing yung mindset. Because right now, there's this kind of mindset na intense dapat ang agriculture to meet yung demand for, for dun sa mga pagkain na kailangan ng tao dahil dumadami ang population. And of course, the impact of RA will also take time. So hindi madali inourish ang health ng soil. Kaya kailangan natin mas paigtingin ang pag-adopt nito. And we hope that more and more uh, farming communities, hindi lang sa coffee farming, but other crops as well, will also find interest and uh, i-adopt yung tinatawag nga natin na RA. So, and to end yung synthesis, uh, we should uh, we should remember that RA is, RA's focus is not just on protecting, but also on restoring. And whatever we do should have a positive effect on the farmers and community. So there are still many new learnings and things to learn from our agriculture practices to make it more climate smart and sustainable. Um, Ryan? Um, thank you, Jade. Um, uh, Ray, i-plug lang like... natin. Sorry. Uh, the yes. link to the regenerative agriculture video um, was shared by Donald in the chat. So for those who want to access it, um, it's in the chat box. Thank you. Okay. To formally close this session, please welcome the Senior Vice President and Head of Corporate Affairs of Nestle Philippines, uh, Mr. Jose Joey Uy III. Sir Joey, good morning po. Hi, good morning. Maraming salamat, uh, Ryan, uh, and your co-host, si, uh, si Ami, si Susie, for being a great moderator, and also for Jade for giving a great synthesis. No, I'd like also to uh, let you know that uh, we're very thankful for help allowing us to co-organize uh, uh, this session, uh, we thank uh, PPSA uh, for this opportunity. No, alam ko bihira na pag-usapan ng uh, re regenerative agriculture. No, and it's not as interesting or sexy like digitalization na kar karamihan ng mga youth eh, yun ang gusto. But I am very thankful for the students and the participants for their interest in this uh, worthwhile uh, course on agriculture. No, and I wish you that you will become successful agronomists or agripreneurs in the future because you are the backbone of our society. You know, at Nestle, we are always delighted to talk about uh, our insights, our best practices on uh, re regenerative agriculture because, you know, we sit between the farmer and the consumers. And so we have to take to heart the importance of regenerative agriculture because, one, uh, it only, it you know, it ensures uh, not only food security, but the future of uh, the next generation. If today we are being, we are able to fend for ourselves with the uh, resources available for us, we should take the responsibility not to compromise 
the ability of the future generation to fend for themselves and to make sure that the resources available today is available for them in the future. You know, uh, this subject matter is very critical, no? and we should start to sound the alarm bells. Why do I say this? Because one, uh, we have an arising problem uh, in terms of agriculture. Alam po natin na ang yield ng crop or output natin sa Pilipinas eh, malaki ho ang uh, uh, decrease year on year. No? Uh, kadalasan na pag-uusapan nga sa mga jaryo at newspapers, we have issues in almost every crop from sugar to rice to coffee and a whole lot more. What does this mean? This is the impact of climate change. This is the impact of urbanization. And all the more, we should give importance to bringing back soil health through uh, regenerative agriculture. Why? Because food security is critical. If, if the land where we plant our crops are diminishing or decreasing year on year, all the more we have to bring back the soil health to improve uh, the, the yield of the remaining land for our crops. Otherwise, we will uh, end up having limited resources and that we will continue to import uh, food or basic commodities to ensure food security. So it is very important that we uh, continue our thrust, our journey in promoting re regenerative agriculture. Um, alam nyo ho, uh, at Nestle, we always uh, ask ourselves and challenge ourselves, what can we do to contribute to the environment? And it is through RA wherein we can actually help. Uh, all that, uh, you know, I'd like to thank uh, Walter, Donnell, and Arnold, and Angel for sharing their knowledge, their expertise, their experience uh, to everyone. And I hope that you will continue to do so, so that every every single farmer, the network that uh, we have in the industry, will continue to practice for the benefit of the future generations. What they have taught will definitely help soil health and biodiversity in our agricultural sector. You know, as mentioned earlier, the farmers are our backbone in terms of food security and agricultural system, all the more we have to be mindful of really caring for them. No? And we cannot do this, Nestle cannot do this alone, PPSA cannot do it alone. We need the help of DTI, we need the help of Department of Agriculture, not only for the coffee industry, but for the entire agricultural sector. This is a practice that we should continue to do and expand across uh, every single industry in the Philippines. It is a complex uh, problem, but I do hope that the students and the stakeholders will become ambassadors in promoting regenerative agriculture for the sake of our country, for the sake of food security, for the sake of the future of the next generation as well. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for this very interesting session. More power to everyone, and I hope that we can save the earth through RA. Maraming maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat din po, Sir Joey. No? Um, that ends today's learning session. Uh, thank you everyone for attending. Mula sa aming puso, maraming maraming salamat po at sinamahan nyo kami kahit extended po yung ating uh, oras na pasarap ang ating kapihan, usapang kapihan this morning. Okay? Uh, this session po is brought to you by the Philippines Partnership for Sustainable Agriculture and also with Nestle Philippines. Um, see you again po in our next usapang session. Ito na po, sa May po, meron po tayong susunod. No? So ang magiging uh, series po uh, sa, sa next usapan po ay nakadepende sa kung ano yung gusto ninyong pag-usapan. So maraming salamat at laging tatandaan, di lang ang mga farmers natin ang bumabangon para sa atin para iproduce tayo ng kape or kung ano man na mailagay sa hapagkainan, na, sa hapagkainan natin no? sa table. So dapat tayo din ay bumabangon para sa kanila. No? So, good morning and have a great weekend ahead. So, maraming salamat po. Bye-bye.